So it's about 9.14, 9.15 p.m. on recording here. So we're working on the assumption that some of these uh, scores will actually hold up. Uh, right now you got Costa Rica, has got a 3-0 lead on Cuba, Honduras, the football of Central America Derby, with a 3-1 lead on El Salvador. Outside of that, every other team has played two games so far. And kind of have a feel for what's happening. We have teams which have already moved on. Uh, congratulations to Mexico, Panama, the US, Canada, who all officially made it through to the round of 16. But those two teams, actually those four teams, are now fighting for uh, first and second spots in their groups respectfully. Uh, leaves up a few more spots open for different uh, seeding and positioning. So you know, let's kind of walk our way through this. Uh, Mexico, they look dominant as per usual. Um, nothing new there. Uh, Panama, you know, able to get two victories over Guatemala as well as Curacao. So the match of first place. I mean, we're gonna favor Mexico in that matchup, right? Mexico's looked the best out of all the teams. Now, granted, we saw a heavily rotated U.S. side take on Trinidad and Tobago and come away with a 3-1 victory. Where Canada, not as heavily rotated, you know, took on Barbados, got off to a quick 2-0 lead and then just couldn't really get another ball pass for 3 or 4. So going to their game tomorrow against the U.S., it really does feel like the U.S. has had the advantage. They have the rest of the when you get to these youth tournaments, especially in CONCACAF, I mean, they're playing Guatemala, which means you're dealing with, one, a game every other day, and then two, also, the elevation. So keeping squads rotated and keeping players fresh is going to be very vital to get players through and go. You want to bring a solid 20 players that are all more than likely going to see the pitch. Versus bringing 20 and only relying on 11 to 15. You're, you're going to need that rotation and keep the players fresh because once you get to the round of 16, everyone's playing with a little bit more. It's going to come down to not only skill, but fitness level. So that's going to matter a lot. Group C was interesting here where you have Guadalupe getting a win over 10 man Jamaica, which keeps them alive. I mean, technically every team in this group is alive now because with Costa Rica beating Cuba, you have Guadalupe versus Cuba on Thursday and then Costa Rica versus Jamaica on Thursday as well. And there is a doomsday scenario where Cuba is able to beat Guadalupe by enough goals. And because of goal difference, Jamaica, if, Co if Costa Rica takes it to Jamaica, there is a darkest timeline situation where as long as Cuba beats Guadalupe by more goals than Costa Rica does to Jamaica, Jamaica can find themselves at the bottom of the group. And it's a distinct possibility with Costa Rica right now to me being the best here in Group C. Group D, which I said was the group for vibes. I mean, I know you have Honduras, Haiti, El Salvador there. Suriname, not dead yet, but they'd have to get a result against El Salvador, and it'd have to be a big result. So they'd at least have to win by four, unless Honduras is able to pile on more goals. Um, again, you guys can tell me in the comments afterwards if that's the case or not. But yeah, this is now starting to shape up, and we're starting to get a feel for what's gonna happen now. So we kind of look at the proverbial bracket. Let's take a look at this bracket and see where teams are starting to line themselves up, right? With A, our group E, in that case, with Mexico and Panama. It's looking like Mexico is going to be facing off against Nicaragua. And then group E, so then Panama will be playing the third place team of group G, E, F. G, so that would be group C. So, yeah, Panama could get themselves a decent run because right now you have it could be anyone from Guadeloupe to 
Cuba to Jamaica. And that's not a bad matchup for Panama. So those are the two matchups there. In group, as we have it listed here, in group F, the US and Canada. I give the edge to the US right now, just because they'll have the fresher players. But yeah, with that group F, they are looking at playing Dominican Republic. And then the runner-up of that will be playing Group H, which is the third place team there. So that could be anyone from El Salvador to Haiti to maybe a Suriname, which would be a very interesting matchup because there's a lot of Canadians. It's a low-key thing. A lot of players from Canada in this CONCACAF tournament. Normally we say, yeah, there's a lot of Americans coming through, but there's actually a lot of Canadians, whether that's CF Montreal or Toronto FC. So... Countries are scouring Canada for sure, and they're looking for inefficiencies, which I think is a great idea to find talent. If you know they're not going to go through, I mean, you could be uh, the U.S. and get a Figueroa, who, you know, under a player, or you know, you could be Haiti and say, "Let me get Joseph from CF Montreal." Let me Jamaica and get Mahoney from TFC. So that'll be very interesting for where that sets up. And the other two groups aren't as easy to really see how it goes through. But, guys, let me know who's impressed you. What are you intrigued about so far? Just put it in the comments below. I'm going to stop rambling right now. Have a good night.